What is yoga? What's the point of doing yoga? Particularly in a world where there's so much suffering, where people are disposable, where systems are violent and don't allow people to support themselves. What's the point in lying in Shavasana on the ground, watching your breath or stretching yourself into difficult and demanding positions? I would say that the point of doing yoga is, and this is only my interpretation, that it allows you to become more compassionate about the situation that you find yourself in. Not in a passive way, not in a way that allows you to escape. Although a lot of people, I notice, come to yoga class as a way of escaping. They see it as a sanctuary from the rest of their difficult, demanding lives. But actually, yoga is a practice that allows one to become more compassionate in all areas of one's life. And as I say, compassion is not a passive, accepting attitude. This doesn't mean that we simply acknowledge and accept everything that's happening. Although, in a sense, of course, radical self-acceptance, radical acceptance of the situation we are in is fundamental to yoga practice. However, learning how to observe and how to comment on situations which are violent, situations in which we are involved and implicated, in which we are complicit because of the lack of attention that we have paid to these situations. I'm talking about things like, as I mentioned earlier, the violent systems in which we're enmeshed, including things like capitalist systems that don't allow people to take personal responsibility for their own situations, that deprive people of the opportunity to really experience what it's like to be autonomous and be self-responsible, that limit the foodstuffs that are available to people who are living from hand to mouth, to factory farmed, violently produced produce, to produce that has not uh, sustained the soil in which it is grown and so is in a constant state of energetic depletion, forced into situations where we use transport or goods that in their turn rely on exploitative and destructive programs of production and manufacture. We all know that this is going on. Often, and I speak from personal experience here, it causes us great anger and great misery to recognize that we're enmeshed in these systems and also more personally in systems that cause us to become violent in our own relationships. Now, again, I'm talking personally and it is to my great shame that I have been very angry in my own life and that that has manifested itself in anger, rage, screaming, swearing at members of my own family. 
So yoga has an important place in this kind of society. I think we need to recognize and acknowledge without blame, without even evaluating whether what we're involved in is good or bad, but recognizing that there are things which are good for the systems on which we depend. And these include graduating a flow of energy through all the systems, so not blocking systems with plastics and unrenewable resources, not destroying systems like deforesting or ex making species extinct. All these processes work best for us when the flow of energy that dissipates through all systems is allowed to be graduated. And that includes how we react to ourselves when we're faced with different situations. Yoga really gives an opportunity to practice and to reflect on very honestly what we're doing and how we're doing it, both in the way that we hold ourselves physically, in the way that we breathe, and in what our breath does to how we feel physically and emotionally. It allows us to reflect in a deeply honest way on what is engaging us psychologically, where our minds are at, without judging, without evaluating in a positive or negative way, whether it's lust, greed, anger, fear, hope, love, just acknowledging, just reflecting on, just being completely honest about where we are right now. And through that reflection, through that honest self-appraisal, we become more and more able Actually, this happens in an instant, but it's also practice. You get more skillful at it. At stepping back and taking a broader and broader view, and it is precisely that capacity to take a broader, more compassionate observation of the situation that loosens the inevitability of our reactions within the situation. So, to conclude, I would just say, find a way of practicing. Find a way of being very present, very observant in your own body. And if that means holding a position that's perhaps unusual, so that your attention has to remain present, then you're effectively doing yoga asana. If it means graduating the flow of breath through your nostrils and into your lungs, then you're practicing pranayama, yogic breath control. If it means watching thoughts, emotions, then you're practicing a version of yogic sleep or yoga nidra, or even you could call this sense withdrawal, pratyahara. And you can go through the various stages of yoga practice without necessarily practicing yoga in any formal way. So I wish you great joy in your experience of learning to accept completely your own body, your own situation, but also to learn to loosen those connections that are causing suffering in your life. I wish you great strength and I wish you great compassion. <laughs>